Welcome, I'm Ann Emery, and today I'm going to teach you about using Excel tables. Excel tables are different from regular old tables. A regular table just means that you have data arranged by columns and rows. Maybe you've got three columns across and three rows going down. You probably have dozens of regular old tables inside of your Word documents or inside of your PowerPoint slides or inside of your PDFs. Today we're talking about Excel tables, which are a special feature of Excel. You simply click on a button that says Insert Table, and then Excel automatically inserts filters for you and lets you perform easy calculations on your data set without needing any special formulas or functions. So on this next tab, Demographics, here's what I mean by a regular table. We're looking at demographic information for about 100 people. We've got their ID numbers, their gender, their age, their household income, and so on. There are two prerequisites for using Excel tables. First, you need to make sure your data set is contiguous. Contiguous means touching or sharing a border, like the contiguous 48 states. It means we can't have any rows or columns that are completely empty or blank. This data set's fine. There aren't any rows or columns that are completely empty or blank. We do have a few empty cells here and there, kind of like a Swiss cheese pattern. Here's one for age, and here's two empty ones for income. Um, and that's fine. All data sets in the real world have some extent of missing data. Sometimes novice data analysts accidentally have empty rows or columns in their data sets, so their data set might look something like this with a completely empty column, or it might look something like this with a completely empty row or two. So if you find that your data set has some empty rows and columns, you just need to click on that empty column, right click, and you're looking for the option that says delete. Same thing with rows, you'd click on the 65 and 66 area off to the left, right click, and go to delete. The second prerequisite to using Excel tables is that every column needs a header. So let's scroll up to the top and check out my headers. They're right there. ID, gender, age, household income, work setting, years of experience, city, state, and zip code. Now, technically you still can create an Excel table without headers, but it's lousy data management and your table will be much more difficult to interpret later on. I do strongly recommend adding short variable names to the top of every column before using an Excel table. So this data set's fine, we already went through it, we know we've got every column labeled, ID, gender, age, and so on. Data sets like this one are just so intuitive, it's very, very obvious that column B is talking about gender, that sometimes novices forget to add labels to each column or they just skip that step. So just make sure you scroll all the way to the right and the left of your data set if you have a very large data set and make sure everything's labeled properly before proceeding. Okay, let's insert a table. You can click on any of the cells inside of your table. So you could click here, or here, or here. I almost always click on A1 out of habit. Then go to the Insert tab up at the top, and you're looking for the button that says Table. Just click on it one time. You're gonna get a pop-up window and some blinking green lines. Can you see those blinking green lines surrounding my data set? Sometimes people get intimidated by these confusing pop-up windows, but don't despair. Just take a look at what it says. It's simply asking you two things. So first, Excel wants to confirm that it's got the appropriate range for your table. It thinks your data set extends from A1 through I102, which is correct. And that's why it's giving you the blinking green lines, to make it easy for you to scan your data set and make sure that none of your rows or columns have accidentally been excluded. So take a moment and scroll through your data and make sure it's correct. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom, make sure everything that I want is included. It looks fine. Second, Excel wants to know whether you've labeled all of your columns, as I suggested that you do. If you followed this step correctly, and all of your columns do have short variable names at the top, then just make sure that the checkbox is checked, this one right here, my table has headers, and click OK. Now you've got an Excel table. Let's explore and check out the features. Here's what you probably noticed first. Excel has automatically added colors for you. If you don't like these colors and want to change them, just go up to the Design tab and pick a color scheme of your choosing. The Design tab is right here. It's highlighted for us since we've already clicked on the table. And here are the colors that you can choose from. You should have a lot of different options, especially if you have a more uh, recent version of Excel, like Excel 2013 that I'm using today. 
Excel has also automatically added filters in the top row of your table. So here's my top row up here. Do you see these little small buttons right here? These little squares with arrows inside of them? These are filters. They're kind of similar to Excel's sorting feature, but a little bit different. They're even better because they're so much easier to use. So you could click on the filter button next to ID number. And I already have my ID numbers sorted from smallest to largest. If I click on the button that says sort largest to smallest, it automatically rearranges itself and Excel's done all the heavy lifting and the boring work for me. I could go over to gender and click on that arrow. I could sort A to Z or Z to A. So I'll sort A to Z and I'll have the females first and the males second. Now the females are up top and the males are down below. Or maybe I want to look at my data reverse alphabetical, Z to A and then I would have the males at the top of my data set and the females down below. You can also filter your data pretty easily here, so you'd click on the arrow again, and we could look at, let's say, just the males. Now the data set looks a little bit truncated or cut off because we've purposefully filtered it to only look at the males. And when you do this, notice how this little button changes. So instead of the arrow, it's actually added a little filter button, kind of like the filter that you might use in your kitchen when you're cooking or baking. And if you scroll your mouse over it, it tells you that you're only looking at gender uh, equal to male right now. So to undo a filter, it's pretty easy. You can either just click the undo arrow a few times in your data set, or just click on the little filter button again and click on select all to get your full data set back to normal. Okay, so here's the final feature of Excel tables that I wanted to show you today. And this is the feature that you're going to like best. It's called the total row, and it allows you to perform quick analyses without having to memorize or remember any formulas. So first we need to enable the total row. Click anywhere in the body of your table so that the table tools design tab shows up. And we're looking for the little checkbox that says total row. So check that and then you see at the bottom of your data set that now the word total shows up on the bottom and it's added some thicker lines. Something special is happening with this row now. So you can click on each of the cells one at a time and you'll notice little arrows showing up again. These are different arrows from those filters that we have up in the first column. These are actually drop-down menus with our formulas that are there that we don't have to type in anything by hand they're there and easy to use for us. Now for text fields like gender, where it just contains uh, text like male and female, you can only do uh, one main calculation here, and that's the count, which is a tally of how many people have that variable available in your data set. So if you click on the arrow and you go to count, it tells us that 101 people, or everybody in our data set, has data for gender. If you perform a count or a tally on age, we'll see that only 100 out of our 101 people have age data. It gets a little bit more fun though for numeric fields like age and household income. So for those types of variables, when you've got numbers that you can perform actual mathematical calculations on, you've got a few more options. So you could find a minimum or the lowest number in your data set. So the smallest age there or lowest age is 20. You could find the maximum or largest number, which is 74. You could find the average or the mean, 48. And if you're doing a statistics or research project, you might be interested in standard deviation. So you'd click on STDEV from the drop down menu, and you'd find a standard deviation of 16 years. I really like this total row because anybody, even with super beginner Excel skills, can use it. You don't have to memorize that average is equals average and you have parentheses and selecting an area. It's so easy to use. Really, anybody can use it. I hope you enjoyed learning about Excel tables today. If you liked this tutorial, please leave a comment and let me know. And if you're ready to learn more, head over to my blog at ankemery.com to view more tutorials and articles related to both data analysis and data visualization. Thank you.